So hi, welcome everyone. This is going to be the class uh, Psych 2440. It's a new numbering system, so I'm still trying to get used to that. Um, this used to be Psych 235, so that way you know what it is. It's, it's human growth and development. We're going to be looking at um, conception, basically, life beginning from conception until death by old age, the kind of the natural lifespan of a human being uh, and everything that happens and all the craziness that occurs within this, this time frame. Um, in this video, I'm going to be introducing myself. My name is Sam Fletcher. I am the instructor for this class, so I'll give you a little bit more information about myself. I'm also going to give you a, a kind of what to expect in the class, as well as a walkthrough in D2L. I have not figured out how to share my screen through this video format, unfortunately. But um, what I'll do is I, I'll, I'll tell you kind of what we're looking at, and you can follow along in D2L if you open up a different tab or something like that. Um, so you can be watching the video while you're doing that. Okay. So let's see, let's get started. Oh, quick note too, these videos, all these videos that you'll see in this semester that are from me are through YouTube. Uh, YouTube. So if you click down, it always flip flops me. If you click down in the right corner, generally there's gonna be a little YouTube, YouTube sign. You can pull that up and it'll open it up in YouTube and then you can actually access it through your phone um, or if you have like a smart TV or something or a Roku or whatever, Fire Stick, all those different things. Uh, if you have YouTube on there, you can watch these videos through that so hopefully that makes it a little bit easier I know in the past some people have really liked the uh, having the 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 videos and things that they could watch on their TV where the sounds a little better quality or things like that so that's just a quick note there okay so who am I my name is Sam Fletcher I uh, academically I am my backgrounds all been in history uh, philosophy and then psychology with an emphasis in clinical counseling um, I've been teaching, or I've been working at PCC and primarily teaching for the last 10 years, uh, 11 years. That's weird. Uh, so yeah, been at PCC a long time. Uh, I was a PCC student back, way back, over 20 years ago now. Um, graduated from there, went to CSU Pueblo. From CSU Pueblo, went to Adams State. From Adams State, went back east to a couple different schools and just kind of kept on going. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've been kind of all over the place, but I'm here. I'm back here in the Pueblo area. Um, and this is what I'm doing is teaching here at PCC now. Um, outside of, outside of the classroom, I'm also a farmer. Uh, so I, I raise sheep and currently pigs. We're looking at getting out of that, getting kind of expensive, um, chickens and, and, um, have a large garden and things like that. Past lives. I was a ranch hand for a number of years to actually help pay my way through college. Um, I was also a backcountry guide for, for backpacking, rock climbing, and uh, snowshoeing slash snow skiing slash snowboarding. Um, that also helped me pay through college. Um, so yeah, I, I love outdoors stuff. Basically anything to get me outside, I, 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 I do my best to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm a musician. I play a bunch of different instruments. I, I love music. I love reading. As you can see, I got a bunch of books and that's just one of my bookshelves there. I got a whole bunch all over the house. Uh, so yeah, I'm just kind of a little bit of everything. I, 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 I do my best to, to get into everything I can. So, so that's me. I'm also married, have three kids. Um, so as I'm, as I'm teaching about these things, I, I, I have a lot of personal experience, obviously, because I've moved through a lot of these periods already. Um, but also just from a practical experience of working with kids and things like that. Um, as well, you know, beyond above and beyond just my my academic and, and teaching profession and things like that. So, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. You'll learn more about me as you as you go. Um, I have several different videos throughout the semester that you'll kind of be learning. I like I try to give personal experience and things like that as we go. So, all right, so that's me. Let's go ahead and move into the class. So if you let's if you don't already have it, you can pause the video for a second, open up another tab in your on your internet browser, um, and pull up D2L again. That way you can follow along with us in this course, uh, and I can kind of talk, you, can, you will be able to look at then what I'm talking about as you go, okay? So, um, so you're likely looking at this video, I'm assuming you've unpaused it now, and or already had another tab up. Uh, <laughs> so, right now that you're looking at the at the homepage um, of our course, which is the, the course home, Psych 244002W, it's an online course, Human Growth and Development, on here, I have all the announcements, things like that. That's, again, where you found this video. Um, this is going to be an important area to check regularly. I'd recommend checking this daily. As, as I, If anything gets updated or things like that, I will put those announcements here to let you know what's going on. Uh, at the beginning of each week, I will also post a video giving you a kind of a little reminder of what to expect for that week. 
Um, so you, it'll be just a couple minutes. I'm um, just talking about what's expected of you for each week. Okay. Um, there's there's a different sections on the side here. One is called work to do. Uh, it's very useful. It does not, unfortunately, and I can't figure out why, but it doesn't do everything that I necessarily post. So sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So you're going to, that's a useful tool to make sure you're kind of going along, but also make sure you check the content, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Um, the calendar is also useful with the upcoming events and things like that, kind of things to expect. Um, if you need help with tutoring, uh, PCC offers NetTutor, which is fully online tutoring. They also have tutors at the PCC campus. So if you, if you want that kind of face-to-face -face interaction, um, you can utilize that. Above and beyond that, and they have the phone number here for the Learning Center. That's who you contact if you have questions about the, the tutoring stuff. Um, beyond that, you can also check out the library. The librarians are amazing, especially when it comes time for your research paper for this course. Um, they can help you with, with navigating all the databases and things. And they can do that either in person, which is pretty handy, or um, via WebEx meeting. They can, they can, you can set up an appointment with them and they can meet with you kind of you know one-on-one, -on -one, but virtually uh, to help you with learning how to, to move through the, uh, through the databases and everything that are available to you as a college student here at PCC. So, uh, let's see, uh, down at the very bottom, they also have an announcement for disability resources. If you have any kind of disability, whether that be like long-term learning disability, physical disability, whatever, um, or even short-term, let's say I had a friend, for example, in college, he, at one point he got in a car accident and actually broke both of his arms. He shattered them pretty bad. But he was in a thing where his arms were out like this and they were like hit things. And so he couldn't type or write or anything um, for a couple of months. And with that, uh, he was able to get a hold of the disability service and they were able to set him up with somebody to take notes for him and things while he was recovering. Um, so long-term, short-term, whatever, that is a resource available to you. Uh, I high rec highly recommend doing it. If you think you might have a learning disability or have some kind of a disability that could possibly get in the way of, of your experience as a student, um, go talk to them. They have a lot of resources available to you and different ways they can help you out. So yeah, that's down at the very bottom underneath the accommodations uh, in the, on the homepage here. Okay. All right. Now, most of the stuff in this class, you're going to be able to find in the content section. So if you click on content, I'll kind of give you a little run through here. And this will all be available by the first day of class. If it's not, if you're looking at this early, um, it may or may not be visible yet. I'm still tweaking some of the things, but it'll be all available to you as of the, uh, the very first day of class, May 31st, um, which is Tuesday. Okay. Officially. So, the very first thing you're going to see is the instructor contact information, um, how to get a hold of me. The best way to get a hold of me is through D2L, actually. Just message me. There's a little uh, up at the, the, the top right corner. I think I'm pointing the right way. It mirrors me, so it's kind of a weird thing. Top right corner, um, there's a little, looks like a little envelope. Click on that. That's a way that you can message me, just like email, basically. Um, it is contained within D2L, so you cannot email outside of D2L with this email, and you cannot email into it from outside sources. So you make sure you, know, you, you just click on my information in here. Um, you should be also also get to it with like the class list section, but uh, to, to try to track me down. But anyway, that's the best way to get a hold of me and to stay in contact. Um, I check it daily. Uh, other than basically the weekends are a little bit more spotty, but but throughout the week I check it pretty much every day. So so that's the best way. Second best way is to get a hold of me is to use my work email. Make sure if you use the work email, which is the samuel.fletcher at publicc.edu, that you do it from your student email. Um, by school policy, we're not supposed to re respond to anyone who has like a Gmail account or a iCloud or whatever. Um, and so, or AOL, whatever, Hotmail. Uh, all those different ones, right? If it's, if it's not with, from within the, the, the school system itself, I'm not supposed to respond to it. Um, the email coming from your student account is what basically allows me to, to figure out if it actually is in fact you or not. Um, you can access your student information through your PCC portal. Um, your, your, your student email will there be there again at the top right uh, corner. So that way you can check that out if you need to go with me. That one I don't check as regularly. I probably should, but I don't. I, I typically check it just a couple times a week because it's a little extra pain to get signed into it. I know it's silly, but it's true. Um, so yeah, if you need a fast response, D2L is definitely the way to go. Um, if for some reason it's just a quick question, let's say, and, and, and you're, you're, uh, there's not, you know, it's not real pressing or not real, you know, maybe it's just something real, you're like, wait, where is this or whatever? 
uh, in the in the uh, discussion section. So again, top top right, no, top left. Okay, you're me, sorry. Top left, you get the discussions. Um, you can scroll down a little bit, and there's a thing called general questions and comments. You can throw a quick question on there. I'll check that regularly also. But then also, if you if it's just something kind of a basic question, uh, potentially other students might spot it and can answer you if I can't get to it before it, right? So if you want a really fast response for something kind of simple, that might be a good option to do as well. But if it's something more in-depth, message me. Okay. Okay. As far as phone numbers, things like that go, they technically did give me a phone number, but honestly, they don't let me know that anybody called it until it's weeks afterwards, which generally means like the end of the semester. Um, so I don't even worry about the, the, the phone number. That's not, that's not an effective way to get a hold of me, basically. Um, office hours are basically by appointment. So just message me. Let me know if you have any questions or something like that. And you're like, I want to meet with you for a few minutes about this or whatever. Um, we'll set up a WebEx meeting. And then we can see each other face to face and kind of talk it out if you have any, any help or need any help with that kind of thing. Okay. All right. So that's everything in that instructor contact information. Now we're going to go to start here. Um, in the start here, I have a, at the beginning, at the very top, I have a list of different resources that are available to you as a PCC student, one of which is the Learning Center, awesome resources for the tutoring and things like that is. Um, I also have the, the direct link to the tutoring, um, disability resources, tech support, and then TRIO. Uh, TRIO is a, an excellent program. I actually worked for them for a few years um, here at PCC. But it is a... Uh, so it's, it's TRIO Student Support Services for the college age students. There's also TRIO Upward Bound, which is if you're in high school, that's a program to check out as well. Uh, but TRIO, basically, if you are a first generation, meaning neither of your parents has a bachelor's degree or higher, um, or if you're low income, which generally if you qualify for a Pell Grant in any way, shape, or form, you are considered low income from the school standards. Um, or if you have any kind of a documented disability, long-term, temporary, whatever, if you have a disability and, you, and it's needing attention, and it's documented, which means that basically you, you've got it in place with the PCC uh, Disability Office, um, you qualify. Any one of those can qualify you for the program. Um, with that, once you're in the program, they can help you with everything from getting your classes picked out to helping you find financial aid and scholarships um, and applying for them. They offer one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, so if you need help with, with classwork and things like that, they can help you out. They have tutors that are available to just TRIO participants. Um, it's, it's an excellent program. They also, if you're looking at transferring, they'll help you with the whole transfer process of locating the school that'll be the next step for you, um, how to get into it, and they'll, they'll help you along that whole process. Um, that's just a few of the things they do. Literally, when I was working in there, I helped everyone with, with I mean, I helped people from everything, from like people who were homeless and couldn't find homes, finding places to live, to, to um, you know, getting out of abusive situations, to finding technology because their computer died, and I mean, everything, right? So they're, they really are an amazing program. Highly recommend checking them out um, and applying. It's really, it's, it's not too much. It takes about five minutes to apply um, and it's well worth that process. Okay, so there's that. And then below that, I have uh, resources for studying. These are just some different tools to kind of help you along the way. Um, I have a few videos that I've shared from different groups that basically have condensed. All right, sorry about that. Just realized that, uh, going back and editing, that the, the microphone just cut out at that point. So picking up where we left off. Um, resources for studying, basically just has some videos in there that can help you kind of learn to read the textbook more effectively and more efficiently, um, where you don't spend as much time. It basically teaches you how to skim well, right? Textbooks are not like a novel. You're not gonna be sitting down reading it word for word. Um, I tried that for years, realized that, uh, not for years, I tried it for a while, realized that I just didn't have time to read that much stuff. Um, and so you gotta learn how to read effectively. Basically, these videos give you a kickstart and how to do that versus doing like me, where you're basically trying to figure it out by trial and error, right? Um, one really good one is this Marty Lovedell Study Less, Study Smart. It's an excellent video. It's a he's a professor who basically studies how we study, um, and so it's it's well worth the watch. It's about an hour long though. If you don't want to spend an hour learning it, I also gave you a video that's a little six minute summary um, by College Info Geek of that longer lecture. Really good. Both of those are really good. But yeah, kind of gives you a little bit. Real quick, this is the this is the book we're doing, Invitation to the Lifespan, uh, fourth edition. There's a fifth edition already out that is basically exactly the same book. It just has um, more more up to date uh, data as far as like all the statistics and things like that that they give. It's by Kathleen Strassenberger. You can find that information in on our on our uh, homepage as well. I've, I've included that information there, so you can track it down. If you don't want to get through the bookstore, you can track it down that way. But you're going to need that book. 
Um, it is a lot of reading. We're doing generally about two, two chapters per week. Um, so this class is reading heavy, right? So be prepared for that. Uh, get the book as soon as possible because all there's going to be quizzes over the book every week. So make sure you, you have that. Okay. Let's see. Course information. Just kind of gives you a breakdown of the, the points there of what to expect. So we have introduction worth 10 points, acknowledgement expectations worth 10 points, where you basically, you'll, you'll find that just down here in the same chunk here. Um, <clears throat> we have weekly discussions worth 30 points each, uh, where, where you'll, this will be your, this kind of takes the place of the actual classroom discussion, uh, where it gives you an opportunity to, to talk about different things. I, I generally will give you some choices to, to go between, but it'll be over material, some aspect of the material that we're learning that given week. Uh, each, there are going to be little chapter quizzes over the readings each week worth five points each. Um, so they, each individual quiz only makes up about 1% of the overall grade. Um, so if you miss one or two, not that big a deal, right? But if, if you miss a bunch, like if you miss them all, there's 16 chapters, so it'll drop you down. Like if you had perfect scores on everything else, it would drop you down to a, a middle B um, if you miss those. I also have lecture quizzes. So part of this, I've, I've actually created lectures that are based off of my notes and things from the chapters, um, similar to what I offer in class itself. I've recorded them. They're videos. So you can watch them whenever you want. Um, and you'll access those each week in the weekly sections, basically. Okay. Those each have a quiz attached to them also, um, worth five points each. Again, about 1% of the overall grade. Missing one or two, not so big a deal. Missing them all kind of adds up, right? Uh, <clears throat> the quizzes, all the quizzes in this class, as well as the final exam, are going to be open book, open note. There's no timer, and they're multiple choice. Okay. Uh, if you've read the material, it's really easy. If you haven't, you're going to struggle a bit, right? But, uh, but yeah, that's my. The testing honestly doesn't show me much about as far as what you know. It shows me that you can take a test well. Um, and so because of that, I do my best. You know, psychology, all the research has basically shown us that testing is an amazing tool for helping yourself understand what it is that you know and what you don't know. Um, but it's not such a great tool for, for you know, assessing somebody with what they know as far as the majority of, of, of testing formats. Um, and so because of that, I've, I've gone with that style. Basically, the discussions are going to be the, the part that you really begin to show me what it is that you know. Okay. Um, I have a social learning theory paper. With that, there's a lot more in depth. On I have another video that basically just that's all it talks about is that you can find that in the social learning paper section in the content here. Um, paper is worth 200 points, and then the final exam is worth 100 points. If you've done well on the weekly quizzes, you'll do great on the final exam. It's basically the same thing, just jumbo size. So the weekly quizzes are five uh, questions each. The final exam is 50. Okay, um, and I'll I'll talk about that more in the video when that final week comes around. So, uh, let's see. Then you have the syllabus. So check out the syllabus. There's a little syllabus quiz. It's a true or false that just says, I have read the syllabus basically. True, you hit true, and you get uh, you get five points extra credit, right? Uh, I also have the acknowledgement of expectations. It's a little discussion. Uh, basically in there, just let me know that you have looked through the content and everything. It makes sense to you and that you're, you're good to go. With that, you'll get 10 points. And that essentially is how you're gonna lock yourself into this class to make sure that I don't drop you as a no-show. Okay. Once you've accomplished anything that actually is worth real points, not just this little extra credit stuff, but the real thing like the acknowledgement expectations or the introduction, I am not allowed to drop you from the course. Okay. Good, bad, or ugly. Like if, 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 if you realize you're like, wait, I don't want to take this course. This course stinks. Um, <laughs> you have to drop yourself, right? You can't just stop showing up. If you just stop, if you do one thing and then don't show up anymore, uh, you, you'll, you will receive a failing grade. In the course. So uh, make sure if you choose to not take the course that you drop it officially, talk to an advisor or something. Um, same thing later on in the semester, if you're if you're struggling and as the semester goes, you can withdraw later on, but I'm not gonna be able to withdraw you myself. You gotta do it, you gotta do it on your own. Okay. And you'll find those dates. Um, you'll find all those dates and stuff in here as far as like the drop date and withdrawal date and all those. Okay. Uh, let's see, social learning theory paper, like I said, just kind of gives you the breakdown of the information there, what to expect. Um, also have the, the I have some APA writing. So the paper is APA formatted, uh, meaning that you, the, the, the structure of the paper is gonna be APA. It's similar to MLA, but not exactly. Okay, there's a little different rules and things on what to expect as far as how you cite your sources and things like that. Um, 
So I give you I give you the the Purdue University's online writing labs uh, information. It's the best resource out there, honestly, for online help. Um, I also give you an, a sample paper that kind of shows you what it should look like with little notations and things in the sides and, and stuff as you go. Um, I've also included a link to Grammarly. So if your spelling and or grammar is a little bit on the you know rough side, so I am I am dyslexic, so I understand the struggle of spelling and things like that. I'm not heavily dyslexic, but it's enough to cause a problem uh, when I was younger, especially. I've, I've learned to work with it. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, Grammarly is a really useful tool. It's free. There is a paid version, but honestly, for 95% of people, the free version does plenty. It just it just goes a little bit above and beyond. You're checking your spelling and your 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 grammar formatting and things like that. Okay. But yeah, APA formatting. Make sure you do it that way. Make sure you cite your sources, both in the text as well as in on a reference page at the end. Um, you have to cite your sources. If you don't cite your sources, it basically, it, it could result in a failing grade. Okay, so give credit where credit is due. <clears throat> All right. Uh, okay, and I'll keep on reiterating that as we go. Gotta make sure you cite your sources. Okay, week one. So what to expect in week one, and each week basically it'll come open and you'll have each each week's the stuff. Um, week one, you're gonna have two chapters that we're gonna be going over. Um, so, so we're gonna be covering chapter one and chapter two. Chapter one is basically just kind of giving you a, a, a quick history of mm -hmm. psychology and specifically of the, 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 the field of, of human growth and development as a, as a science. Um, so so I have the, the quiz over the readings. And then you'll also find there's a section in chapter one called PowerPoints and Lecture. In that section, you will find the PowerPoints, which are basically my class notes. Um, so that way you can follow along as, as, I'm, as I'm lecturing. Uh, and you'll also find the lecture, which is a video recording just of me lecturing. Um, once you've accessed the, the, the lecture, a quiz will come open to you. Okay, so once you basically, and by accessing, I mean is once you open it in D2L, uh, a quiz will come open to you that covers that lecture. The quizzes are multiple choice. There's four questions per quiz on these ones, and they are um, the random facts. I, I give you a random fact, four different random facts throughout each lecture, and it's basically a way to just kind of test and see if you've actually watched the lecture or not. Um, so you just kind of got to pay attention for those four random facts. Once you do it, you take the quiz. It's super easy if you take if you've watched the lecture. It's basically impossible, other than just by sheer luck. If you have not, they're like the facts are legitimately just that random. Um, but yeah, so you watch the lecture, take the quiz, get your points basically there. Um, chapter one and chapter two. So chapter one is, is looking at the history. Chapter two is looking at conception to birth. So the moment when the sperm and the ovum come together, basically you have the first little zygote, the first one cell organism with brand new DNA that eventually becomes a full grown human being. From that moment till birth and all of the craziness that can happen in those nine-ish months um, leading up toward birth. Okay. Uh, down below that, I have a bunch of videos. These videos are optional. It's basically just additional resources to kind of help you with um, with understanding the material. So if if you if you really want a deep dive, this is a good place to get started. Or if you're like, man, I'm not quite getting what they're talking about. Like I like. Psychoanalytic theory, like what is this? I'm not. I'm having a hard time understanding what Freud and Erickson are talking about. Um, there's some videos in there to kind of help you with that process. Okay, um, so again, those aren't required, but they're they're extra material just to kind of give you a boost in those areas. You'll also find the discussions at the top of this of the of the week's set section. Um, so this week's is uh, introduction, and then also the week one inter, uh, discussion piece. Okay, each week will be a similar structure. Um, it's a 10-week course, so I believe the, you'll, you'll, have, you'll have two chapters per week for most weeks. There might be one where actually we can get you away, get away with just one. We'll see. Um, that might be the one that I put the paper with. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. But anyway, um, so yeah, just be aware of that. That's basically how they're, how they're going to be structured. So each week it'll come open with what's expected of you. Um, up at the top, starting on the left, uh, you have content discussions where you can access just the discussions that are available. Um, assignments, which is where you're going to find the social learning theory paper as well as in the content, right? Um, quizzes also found in there or in the content section. And that's pretty much the, the most important things um, overall in the course. So just make sure you're checking in on the, the, the announcements regularly to make sure that you know, you know what's expected and or if there's any updates or things like that. Um, 
and that's pretty much it. If you have any questions at any time, or if you're struggling for some reason or other, reach out to me. Um, you know, if, if you're if you're just not turning work in, I have, there's nothing I can do to help you. If you're if you if you're struggling with something or some attribute of life or in, in the class itself, let me know, and I can do I can see what I can do to help you out. And that, whether that be like working with due dates or things like that to some extent, um, for the most part, I don't move them around too much. But in certain circumstances, I'm willing to work with you. So reach out to me if you have questions on any of that. Um, and at any point during the semester, I, I check the I check my messaging here. Like I said, you know, every day of the week, basically, uh, the weekends a little bit less, but um, Monday through Friday, I'm on here. So so if you have questions, let me know, and I'll do my best to get back to you right away. Okay. Um, I think that's it. So yeah, good luck with this semester. Congratulations for being in the course. Um, I look forward to hearing from you and interacting with you in the discussions. I really do enjoy the, the reading the discussions and kind of seeing what your thoughts are and things and learning about you, who you are, and 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 you know why it is you're in this class and all that kind of stuff. So, um, in the in the introduction of yourself, just make sure you get in and and give me a little um, classes. Hope it will go, go smooth. Hopefully, the microphone worked. I don't have to re-record this again. Uh, but I will see <laughs> I will see you and talk with you, interact with you. Um, throughout the semester. So uh, yeah, good luck. And I'll talk to you in the next videos. We'll see you.